Attention, Cosmo students, this is your co-pilot speaking, and if I can pretend to have your attention for just a few moments, I want to thank you for choosing COVID Distant Learning 2020. Properly fasten your seatbelts tightly around your waist. Please look to the side of the room. There is an exit. Make sure that that's where you leave your baggage. Make sure that your attitude is folded in the upright positive position. Should you experience any turbulence or negativity, kindly reach above your head and pull down a prayer and breathe. As you know, this is a no sneezing, coughing, or toilet paper hoarding zone. This is a please and thank you. You're such a good looking educator flight. Seriously, if there's anything we can do to make your experience more enjoyable, please tell us as we fly through anatomy and physiology. This is what you call cheap entertainment. Nobody had to pay extra for it, but you certainly don't get a refund. Thank you for flying with us at COVID Distant Learning 2020. Understanding how the human body functions as an integrated whole is a key component to understanding how a client's hair, skin, and nails may react to various treatments and services. You will need to be able to recognize the differences between what is considered normal and what is considered abnormal for the body in order to determine whether specific treatments and services are appropriate and what should be referred to a physician. Understanding the bone and muscle structures of the human body will help you use proper application of services and products for scalp manipulations and facials. Cosmetologists are licensed to touch and perform services on clients in ways that are not permitted in many other occupations. This is a very important responsibility and as a cosmetologist, you should consider it an honor to be able to aid others in achieving a greater sense of well-being. How can you do this? You can begin by having a solid understanding of the anatomy and physiology of the body. Anatomy is the study of the human body structures that can be seen with the naked eye and how the body parts are organized. The science of the structure of organisms or their parts. Physiology is the study of functions and activities performed by the body structures. If we describe our cells, they are the basic unit of all living things, including bacteria, plants, animals, and humans. Without cells, life does not exist as a basic functional unit. The cell is responsible for carrying on all life processes. Cells are composed of protoplasm, a colorless, jelly-like substance in which protein, fats, carbohydrates, mineral salts, and water are present. Visualize the white of a raw egg. The nucleus is the dense, active protoplasm found in the center of the cells. It plays an important part of cell reproduction and metabolism. Cytoplasm is all of the protoplasm of a cell except that in a nucleus. It is the watery fluid that contains food materials necessary for growth, reproduction, and self-repair of the cell. Cell membrane is the cell wall. It's a delicate protoplasmic material that encloses a living plant or animal cell and permits soluble substances to enter and leave the cell. Cells have the ability to reproduce, thus providing new cells for the growth and replacement of worn or injured ones. Mitosis is the usual process of cell reproduction of human tissues that occur when the cell divides into two identical daughter cells. In order to, for the cells to reproduce, it has to have favorable conditions. That would be adequate food supply, adequate oxygen supply, water supply, waste elimination, and proper temperature.
Tissue is a collection of similar cells to perform a particular function. Each kind of tissue has a specific function and can be recognized by its characteristic appearance. Body tissues are composed of a large percentage of water. There are four types of tissue. The first one is connective tissue. It is a fibrous tissue that binds together, protects, and supports the various parts of the body. For example, bones, cartilage, ligaments, tendons, blood, lymph. Adipose tissue is a technical term for fat. So if you can remember adipone, adipose is fat. Adipose tissue gives smoothness and contour to the body while protecting internal organs and insulating the body. The second one is epithelial tissue. It's a protective covering on the body surface, such as skin, mucous membranes, linings of the heart, the digestive system, respiratory organs, and glands. The third type of tissue would be muscle. It contracts and moves various parts of the body. And then we have nerve tissue. It carries messages to and from the brain and controls and coordinates all body functions Nerve tissue is composed of special cells known as neurons that make up the nerves, spine, and spinal cord. Organs are structures composed of specialized tissue designed to perform specific functions in plants and animals. Body systems are groups of body organs acting together to perform one or more function. The table shown here outlines the body systems indicating the functions of each system and the major organs that are associated with that system. The skeletal system forms the physical foundation of the body. It is composed of 206 bones that vary in size and shape and are connected by movable and immovable joints. The primary functions of the skeletal system is to give shape and support to the body, protect internal structures and organs, serve as an attachment and acts as levers to produce body movements, helps produce white and red blood cells, a function of bone marrow, and it stores minerals. Joints are the connections between two or more bones of the skeleton. Movable, such as the elbows, knees, and hips. Immovable, such as the pelvis or the skull. The skeleton of the head is divided into two parts. The cranium, which is an oval, bony case that protects the brain and the facial skeleton, that is the framework of the face, and it is composed of 14 bones. The occipital bone is the hindmost bone of the skull. It's below the parietal bone, and it forms the back of the skull, and it's above the nape. Your parietal bone is the bone that forms the sides and the top of the cranium. You have two parietal bones. The frontal bone forms your forehead, Temporal bones form the sides of the head and the ear region, and you have two of those. The ethmoid bone is a light spongy bone between the eye socket. It forms the parts of the nasal cavity. Sphenoid bone joins all the bones of the cranium together. The ethmoid and the sphenoid bones 
are not affected when performing services or giving a massage. There are 14 bones of the face. The ones listed here are the ones most involved in the practice of cosmetology. Your nasal bone, you have two of those. They form the bridge of the nose. Your lacrimal bones, you have two of those as well. They're small thin bones located in the front inner wall of the orbits. Your zygomatic bones, you have two of those. They're also called the cheekbones. They form the prominent parts of the cheeks. The maxill is the bones of the upper jaw. Mandible is the bones of the lower jaw. It is the largest and strongest bone of the face. In your neck, you have your hyoid bone. It is the U-shaped bone at the base of the tongue that supports the tongue and its muscles. It is the one and only bone of the throat. Your cervical vertebrae are the seven bones that are at the top of the vertebral column located in the neck region. Your thorax is also known as the chest or pulmonary trunk. It consists of the sternum, ribs, thoracic vertebrae. It is an elastic bony cage that serves as a protective framework for the heart, lungs, and other internal organs. Your ribs, you have 12 pairs of bones forming the wall of the thorax. Scapula is also known as your shoulder blade. It is a large, flat, triangular bone of the shoulder, and you have two of those. They're called scapulae. Sternum, also known as your breastbone. It's a flat bone that forms the vertical front support of the ribs. Your clavicle is also known as your collarbone. That bone joins the sternum and the scapula. In your arm, you have your humerus. That is the uppermost and largest bone in the arm. It extends from the elbow to the shoulder, and it's not too humorous if you bump it. Your ulna is the inner and larger bone in the forearm, which is your lower arm. It is attached to the wrist and located on the little finger side. Your radius is the smaller bone in the forearm, lower arm, and it's on the same side as your thumb. Imagine holding a walkie-talkie. You know, the little button you push is the radio button. So if you can remember, radio button, radial radius is on your thumb side because you use your thumb to push the radio button. Moving down to the bones of the hands, we have our carpus, also known as the wrist. It's a flexible joint composed of a group of eight small irregular bones held together by ligaments. Metacarpus is bones of the palms of the hand. Parts of the hand containing five bones between the carpus and the phalanges. Phalanges, also known as digits, are bones of the fingers or the toes. There are three phalanges in each finger and two in the thumb. So now we're at our legs, ankle, and feet. You have four bones in the leg. You have your femur, which is the long bone that forms the leg and it's above the knee. Your tibia is the larger of the two bones that form the leg below the knee. The tibia may be visualized as a bump on the big toe side of the ankle. Your fibula is the smaller of the two bones that form the leg below the knee. The fibula may be visualized as a bump on the little toe side of the ankle. So if you can remember a fib, is a small white lie. Fibula is the small white bone. Patella, also known as the accessory bone or kneecap, it forms the kneecap joint. So let's remember patella as pat your knee. Patella kneecap. So then we have the ankle joints and they are formed of three bones. You have your tibia, that bone comes down from the lower leg bone. Your fibula is the bone that comes down from the lower leg bone. And your talus is also known as the ankle bone. It's the third bone of the ankle joint. You have 26 bones that make up your foot. They can be divided into three categories. 
the first one being your tarsals. There are seven tarsal bones. Your talus, calcaneus, which is your heel, navicular, three cuneiform bones, and a cuboid. Metatarsal is the long and slender bones. They are similar to the metacarpal bones of the hand. There are five metatarsal bones. Phalanges, you have 14 bones that are composed of the toes. Your toe phalanges are similar to your finger phalanges. There are three phalanges in each toe, except for the big one. It only has two. The muscular system is the body system that covers, shapes, and holds the skeletal system in place. It contracts and moves various parts of the body. Muscles are fibrous tissue that have the ability to stretch and contract according to the demands of the body movement. Within the muscle, there are three parts. The origin is the part of the muscle that does not move and it is attached closest to the skeleton. Belly is the middle part of the muscle. Insertion is the part of the muscle that moves and is the furthest from the skeleton. Pressure and massage is usually directed from the insertion to the origin. Muscular tissue stimulation. We have massage, which can be done either by hand, an electric vibrator, or water jets. You have electrical therapy current, infrared light, dry heat, which is heating lamps or heating caps, moist heat, which is steamers or moderately warm steamed towels, nerve impulse is through the nervous system, chemicals such as acids and salts. You have four muscles in your scalp. You have your epicranius. It's also known as the occipital frontalis. It's the broad muscle that covers the top of the skull and consists of the occipitalis and frontalis. Your occipitalis is the back posterior portion of the epicranius, the muscle that draws the scalp backwards. Frontalis is your front anterior portion of the epicranius. This muscle of the scalp raises the eyebrows and draws the scalp forward and causes wrinkles in the forehead. Your epicranial aporosis tendon that connects the occipitalis and the frontalis muscle. The muscles of your neck, you have your platysma, which is the broad muscle that extends from the chest and shoulder muscles to the side of the chin, depresses lower jaw and lip, as in sadness. Sternocleidomastoideus extends from the collar and chest bones to the temporal bone in the back of the ear, depresses and rotates the head, as in nodding. 